Hi, Dave here. I'm going to give you a tour of some small telescopes. Uh, these would be called probably grab-and-go telescopes, although my opinion may be different than others on what size constitutes grab-and-go. I would certainly consider either of these two telescopes to be easy grab-and-go telescopes. You could uh, grab the telescope on the mount, take it out to the backyard and be observing within a matter of 30 seconds easily. Um, so, you have a couple of nice telescopes. This is a Mead. This is the 90mm ETX. This is one of the early ones. has extremely high quality optics. This comes on a, a fairly inexpensive but functional uh, plastic mount, but you can also take it off that mount and put it on this. And now you've got a, a real nice little outfit because the Unitron mount makes it very convenient, easy to move around, easy to aim. <clears throat> it's all set up, it's all ready to go, it's, a, it's already on a tripod. So it's a very convenient, nice little telescope, gives you 90 millimeters of aperture in a high quality um, Maksutov design. Another one with impeccable credentials is of course Teleview. And that Teleview is a uh, Ranger, which is uh, an older one, they're not made anymore. This was from the 1990s, I think. 70 millimeters of aperture in a very convenient package, also on a nice Unitron mount, easy alt azimuth uh, motion and so forth. One thing that's inconvenient about the Ranger is that in order to get to high powers, you have to use either a Barlow or a really short focal length eyepiece. I have a 4.8 millimeter Nagler that I use in that telescope and it's beautiful, it's, it's superb, shows a nice view. And you can even aim it uh, with, the, with the little Teleview pointing device, it's a, a traditional, typical red dot kind of a, a finder device on that. So those are a couple of nice little grab and go telescopes, I'll be showing you some more here in a moment. I wanted to give you a side by side comparison of the Teleview Ranger 3 inch telescope, it's about f6 or so, um, with the Unitron f15 3 inch also. Now the Unitron 3 inch has a about a 1200 millimeter focal length and it's compacted. Uh, if you haven't seen it you may want to view my other, I have a video especially about the Unitron 131C. Anyway it's compacted with some mirrors in here. This was uh, the Unitron sort of last ditch attempt to make their telescopes more portable and to make them more compact. And they eventually lost the battle and makers like Teleview came up with these uh, apples or semi-apples in a much shorter, more compact telescope that performed just as well. I've actually done a shootout with these two telescopes and compared them one against the other on the same night. Um, I had to use different eyepieces because to get the same magnification uh, you have to use a different focal length of eyepiece. Uh, you know, a, a 20 millimeter here is equivalent to a props uh, a 10 millimeter in the in the Teleview. But I was able to make a fairly good side-by-side -side comparison and I find them both to be absolutely superb. The optics in this in this Unitron are absolutely exquisite. Uh, and of course the, the, the Teleview is impeccable also. So even with the mirrors and so forth, this telescope performs beautifully. The one slight difference is that the um, there's more eye relief. When you use, say, a, a Teleview, oh, say a 10 millimeter uh, plossel with this telescope, you've got a lot of eye relief. You, they don't even make a 5 millimeter plossel to go with this scope, but if you use a, a 4.8 Nagler, very expensive eyepiece in the Teleview, you get pretty good eye relief, but you also have more optical components in the optical train. Um, as a result, it's a little bit unfair to compare them one against the other, but by the same token, I would find them to be roughly equivalent. And I would say that the Unitron experiment was, although it was a failure in a marketing sense, in an engineering sense, it was a big success. Unitron was able to make a compact telescope with the advantages of the uh, long focal ratio optics and make a very, very nice telescope. Um, unfortunately, these never really quite caught on, although I'm still a big fan of the Unitron 131C. 
We'll take a look at some more scopes here in a moment. I'll bet very few of you have seen these two scopes posed next to each other. The Unitron 3-inch folded 131C next to a Brandon 92mm uh, F7 or so, Apple Cravat. Um, and these are both what I would con consider to be within the bounds of a grab-and-go telescope. I must admit that the Brandon is a little bit heavier, uh, but it's also got a little bit more aperture. It's a 92mm as compared to the 3-inch over here, 75mm. So uh, the Brandon actually probably would win the contest in terms of, well, certainly win the contest in terms of performance and in terms of uh, suitability as a grab-and-go telescope. I would probably tend to think that the Brandon would win that also, even though it's the fact that it's a little bit heavier makes it a bit more awkward. And I would consider this to be the limit for me. I don't think I would carry anything much larger than this outside, certainly not as a single package. This concludes my little tour of grab-and-go telescopes. I hope you have enjoyed this. Thank you very much.